Hey, Marcus Conti reporting on the opioid crisis in America. Uh, did you ever see the guy? Like I, I used to, you see those guys in in New York like this. Like, there's a, a frown, frown. Uh, uh, how you doing? Hey, it's, uh, it's this. This is. Uh, how you got the, the the methadones, the heroin heads, to, and now the opioid, the uh, the uh, oxycotton freaks, right? The pill freaks, right? So. So um, there is an opioid crisis in America, right? And Big Pharma is behind it, right? It's not the pill pusher on the corner. It's Big Pharma. Right? And I know, you know, you guys are not into Medicare for all. You think it's uh, it's socialism. It's it it lessens the the uh, it, it makes the the medical profession less something like that, right? Uh, but uh, but if you have a Medicare for All system, and then I'll get into the story, if you have a Medicare for All system, you have competitive drug prices where one, there's one single payer, and that's the U.S. government. We, the government, uh, the, we the people would would bargain with big pharma corporations for price, right? And, uh, of course, effectiveness and, and uh, quality of merchandise, right? But right now, those some there's laws on the books that prevent the United States government from from uh, from uh, bidding uh, the best price on drugs. So so what's going on here, right? So so we'll talk about Medicare for all in another lifetime because this lifetime everybody's too fucking strung out on oxycotton. Oxycotton maker Purdue Pharma judges set to unseal complaint that billionaire family profited from the opioid crisis. Oxycontin maker Purdue Pharma hatched a secret plan to get into the business of selling drugs to treat opioid addiction that its own product fueled. Newly unsealed court filings allege. Right? So this is this is like a monopoly on a on a certain pill, right? They're selling the drug and then they're they're simultaneously Knowing that it's addictive and then trying to profit from the recovery of it. That's crazy. Purdue Pharma is a privately held company by two medical doctors, Raymond and Mortimer uh, Sackler. Right? Revenue of $3 billion per year, 5,000 employees worldwide. Man, strung out. Man, these are drug pushers, these are drug dealers. Uh, it's legal drugs, legal drug drug dealing, right? We're looking, you're looking over the Mexican wall. You want the fucking the dope is coming under the Mexican wall, but you got the Sacklers up in Connecticut pushing, making three billion dollars a year on a, on a legal oxycotton. The explosive claim comes in a lawsuit filed by the state of Massachusetts, which accuses Purdue owners, the Sackler family, and company honchos of creating and then profiting from the opioid addiction. Uh, epidemic through a web of illegal deceit. Right, so they're claiming that it is illegal, is it? <laughs> Nothing's illegal anymore when you make $3 billion a year. Starting in 2014, the company began discussing a plan called Project Tango to expand into opioid addiction treatments. Right, so they're, they're stringing, pe stringing people out and then making money on the, uh, on the other side. Get them coming and going, man. Coming and going. In internal documents about the scheme, staff acknowledged what Purdue publicly denied for decades, that addictive opioids and opioid addiction are naturally linked, right? the suit charges. I mean, that seems like, like a no-brainer, right? Addictive opioids and opioid addiction are naturally linked. <laughs> Fucking shit, man. How could you deny something like that? An illustration of this is this is interesting. An illustration of an end-to-end -end business model shows a funnel with pain uh, pain treatment at the top and opioid addiction treatment at the bottom, while a graph shows the opioid abuse market has grown by a billion dollars between 2009 and 2014. So they're drawing they got fucking pie charts describing how first you start with the with the pain. Pain relief, yeah, yeah, you got some pain here, here's some pills, to take some pills for the pain, right? And then it funnels down to the treatment, right? It's all, it was a plan, they planned it, right? right. The, the plan never eventu uh, eventuated, but in 2016, the Sacklers met to discuss a revised version of Tango, selling the overdose uh, antidote Narcon. That's a motherfucker. <laughs> Narcon. That's the thing, they shoot into a heroin, the, the you know, the, the junkie when he's like, fucking overdosing and, and uh it's like uh it's like shooting frozen water into into the bloodstream 
Um, so they, they went into Narcon. The following year, Purdue uh, CEO Craig Landau proposed capitalizing on the crises in a different way. While other companies were abandoning opioids amid the addiction epidemic, he said Purdue should double down and become an even more dominant opioid seller. The suit alleges Sacklers voted to the Sacklers voted to pay their family more than four billion dollars from Purdue's, Purdue's opioid profits from 07 to 2018. The suit also alleges that the company collected but sat on details of suspected problem subscribers, with staffers reporting the doctors to the board by name, along with the exact number of prescriptions and dollars of revenue each provided to Purdue. So what's the motive here? Pain relief or profit? Right? This is what happens when you profitize medical, medical stuff. Right? Meanwhile, the company hired consulting firm McKinsey to show, it, uh, show how it could get doctors to prescribe more Oxycontin to keep patients on opioids longer, <laughs> the documents. So they had, a, they had a, a plan. The plan was to string them out, get people strung out on Oxycontin, right? and, then, and then find a way to keep them on it. Right? And then ultimately, the longer they stay on it, then try to, to, to move into the recovery field. Crazy. The consultants uh, urged the Sacklers to demand sales rep, reps increase their visits to doctors, especially to the most prolific opioid prescribers. They were targeting doctors that prescribe more of their shit while also helping advise on how to counter the emotional message from mothers with teenagers that overdose on oxycotton it's it's like it's like we it's like they're they're looking for a scapegoat for the murder they're murdering people they're stringing them out and when a couple of people get killed they have their their consultants go out into the field on how to emotionally counsel parents who lose their children to the opioid crisis uh, uh, Purdue Pharma is good stuff, man. Right. So, so what's the what's the takeaway? The takeaway is simple, right? If you have sing, if you have a universal single payer healthcare uh, system in America, right, where big pharma is not allowed to run amok like this, where, where they're not stringing people out for profit, right? It's and then you have you have a look. There's no there's no competition with these guys, right? Right. It's 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 sad. I mean, the the system. I know people. Oh, socialism. It's you can't have it in America. It's we're we're, we're fucking capitalist. Everything has to be about the dollar. But when you have a when you have a when you suck the money out of big pharma, you don't have these types of crises. You don't have drug dealers disguised as doctors uh, selling uh, uh, opioids into the community, right? Legally, right? That's the, that's the reality of the story for, for this for this reviewer. Right? Marcus Conti reporting.